All right, now that we've cut all our parts, we're gonna start to assemble the chair. Okay, I cut my parts a while ago, and so after I cut them, I stack them in this fashion and set them aside. Putting little spacer blocks between each board allows air to move all around the board. Uh, wood expands and contracts as the moisture content of the board changes. And if we cover one face or edge and not the other, um, basically the opposing side gets jealous and the board will warp in order to get air to that side. Um, so by doing this process that we call stickering, um, allowing the air movement to move all around the board, we'll keep our boards uh, nice and straight and flat and keep them ready so that when we're ready to work on them, um, there's nothing else that we need to do. I have all the tools that I'm gonna need for today. I have my tape measure, I have pencil, my speed square, screws, a couple of clamps, and a driver, and a drill with a countersink bit. And I'm using the Torx driver bit that came with the box of screws um, to engage the screw heads, okay? So first of all, I'm going to take my parts and move them off this table, at least the ones that I don't need. Um, and so I know four of these are legs and two of them are like the backrest support, okay? doesn't matter to me which is which, so I'm just going to set these aside. And this is where we have to be careful because we have these boards that are different lengths. We want to make sure we grab the right ones. And that's where we're going to reference our drawing. So these three. Okay. So I have two boards that are 17, two that are 19 and 3 quarters, and two that are 19. So I know the ones that are 17 are the sides of my chair. I know the ones that are 19, I believe that was them, yep, are the seats, the three planks for the seat, and then the three pieces that are 19 and 3 quarters are the front and back aprons. and the backrest. So next we're going to lay out where we're going to put the holes for the screws on our legs. So I'm going to measure down with my tape measure from the top of each of the leg. And for these screws, we're going to put them at one inch and at four, and we're going to center it about the board. And I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to put one, a tick mark here at one inch. We're going to put a tick mark here at four inches. And I'm going to bring my square and these boards are one and a half inches wide and I want to put this centered so I'm going to bring my square over so it's lined up with that tick mark and I'm going to do a little plus sign at three quarter be three quarter being half of one and a half and we're going to come over here to this other one and same thing put a plus sign at that three quarter mark and now we have the locations for the two screw holes so one of the tricks of making things is making sub assemblies so rather than putting the whole chair together at once we're going to put together kind of subgroups and the first thing we're going to do is put together the sides that have the legs attached to it so i'm going to take one of my aprons and double check the length of this this should be a 17 inch part okay we're going to take one of our legs we're going to kind of turn this upside down and i'm going to use one of our quick clamps to hold that in place All right, we're gonna make sure that that's all nice and flush. I'm gonna take the other quick clamp, but I'm just gonna stack it pretty much on top of that one. And that's to keep it from twisting as we go. All right, we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna drill into that first hole that we marked earlier. All right, we're gonna make sure we countersink it a little bit. And if you have any questions on this part, make sure you reference the drill and screw video in the links below. I'm gonna drive a screw. Oh, a little deep, but that'll, that'll work. All right, for the next screw, 
We're going to orient this kind of in a weird way, but it's the only way we can really think of without a workbench, which I'm going to clamp that, and that's going to keep it from spinning. All right, make sure that's all nice and flush. I'm going to take my other clamp here. I'm just going to clamp it to the leg just to get it up off the bench here. I'm going to scoot this one over a little bit just to give me a little more space. Double check that that's nice and flush. All right, and same thing, we're gonna drill and screw in there. Keep in mind that this is not level, this plane. So we're gonna try and drill square to this plane rather than plumb. Then for the next leg, we're going to do the exact same thing just over here. So we end up with that subassembly. We're going to end up ultimately with two identical subassemblies that in when the chairs are finished, they'll be a mirror of each other. But for right now, they're the exact same thing. So you can see this board, the apron's a little cupped, right? So it's kind of cupping away from this board. So for this, this one, kind of acknowledging that, I'm going to clamp up here um, to try and close that up. Screws can run into this issue, and we talk about it a little bit in the screw and drill video, that um, they, they can sometimes not really pull a gap closed, depending on how the screws kind of engaged. So I'm gonna clamp that shut before I drill the hole, and hopefully that closes that up a little bit. Big thing is kind of making sure that I'm leaving enough space to get to the, the hole there. Which it looks like I am. So I'm going to come in here with the drill, and same thing, we're going to... And if everything went as planned, that should keep that gap closed. We're going to finish these sub-assemblies with the legs by attaching the support that holds the backrest. Keep in mind that up until this point, the subassembly is the exact same, but for this part, we're shooting for a mirror image of one another. So for one, we're gonna have the backrest support over here. For the other side, we're gonna have it over here. That's really, really important, okay? We're gonna figure out that angle that this needs to be mounted at, because it, does, it doesn't go perpendicular. It does get a little bit of an angle using our combination square here. So I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm going to make sure that that's registered nice and tight on the apron. And I'm going to pivot it about this top of this leg. It even is labeled pivot right there. Okay. I'm going to bring it over. And on this kind of uh, the hypotenuse leg here, it has this degree scale. And it's labeled degrees. And you can see they're really far spaced apart. And what we're shooting for is five and a half degrees relative to the top of the apron. So if I rotate that about the pivot, once I get past five, you can see I get this, I can shoot to five and a half pretty easily, okay? And what that means is down here, we've now moved it over that much. So I'm gonna mark the last maybe inch underneath the apron, and that's establishing my angle for that backrest. Just like that. Okay? To fasten this, it's gonna be similar to the leg, I'm gonna make sure that the, this backrest support is running into that top corner of the leg and that I can still barely see that line. That's kind of handy. If you cover up the line, you don't know how much you've covered up the line. So it's pretty important to always be able to see a little bit of it. As, as you can see, once it's gone, it could be gone that much. So that's kind of really important to make sure you can always see it. And I'm gonna line up this first corner that hits the bottom of the apron rather than the second corner. That's kind of up to you. Just make sure you do the same way on both sides. Okay. And we're gonna sneak a clamp in here to hold it all in place. Okay. And then I'm gonna put another clamp over here, making sure that I don't cover up my hole, or at least one of my hole locations. I'm going to tighten that up, and I'm going to revisit and make sure this hasn't all moved because it has a little bit. So scoot it back up. Okay. 
All right, and we'll tighten it. And I'm gonna put a, a hole and a screw there just like the legs. All right, for the other one, I'm gonna move these around a little bit. It seems like I can keep that clamp there. Put this one back. Keep in mind too, because we're not working flat, making sure that I'm always kind of adjusting my drill angle relative to the face that I'm drilling into, rather than like trying to hold it plumb all the time or level all the time. Two of these that are a mirror of each other so you can see it's starting to look a bit chair like for the front and back aprons and the backrest we're going to locate our holes in very similar locations um the same distance from the edge the only difference being the backrest the holes are going to be located one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom the way we get there is a one inch from the top and four and a half inches from the top but we're going to do a little bit something different for these Another thing is we're going into the leg rather than into the apron as we drill through these, hole, these holes. So they're gonna be pretty close to the edge here because the leg's only three quarters of an inch thick. They're gonna be only three eighths from the edge. So I'm gonna take my tape measure. I'm gonna put a tick mark of three eighths. I'm gonna come in here with my speed square and I'm gonna put a mark, a plus at one and a half and four and a half. And this is for the aprons, speci the aprons specifically. We're kind of offsetting the holes to make sure that we don't hit the screws that we all, we've already put in. So we're gonna come over here, do the same thing. I tend to, when I'm laying things out, work in a mirror rather than rotating my work because I find the nice thing is then kind of my reference is always staying in the same spot. So three eighths from the edge, we're gonna come down here, one and a half and four and a half. And that's going to be our layout for the front apron and the back apron. All right, so we're going to start assembling the chair kind of beyond its sub-assemblies into its general assembly. And we're going to do that by putting the front apron on, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is clamp it in place. This is a little fussy, so kind of bear with me as I go through this. And it might take a few tries to make sure everything's clamped in the right place. So we're going to take our front apron. We're going to make sure that the hole locations are oriented correctly. So I want the side with the wider gap to be at the top rather than at the bottom to make sure that when I drill the holes, it does, I don't run into the previous screws I've already put in. Okay, so just like that. And we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna take a clamp and put it on from the top. And I'll explain why we do it this way in just a second. I want to make sure that I leave that hole uncovered. Uh, you can see it's a little fuzzy. All right. And I'm going to try and line it up the best I can, but it's going to scoot around a little bit when I put the next lamp on, so we're going to have to make some adjustments. I'm going to take the other one, and I'm going to come in just the opposite of it. So, still kind of, so from the bottom rather than the top. And the reason we're putting them on this way instead of this way is so that's this way they're kind of fighting each other so it's wanting to keep the board nice and still if we put them both this way it wants to pull the board away from this kind of location which becomes that much more kind of temperamental so i'm going to make sure everything is nice and flush it seems like it has to go a little bit towards the bottom of the chair and as long as the clamps aren't super tight you should be able to just kind of scoot it around that seems pretty good We'll give the clamps one last little squeeze. And we'll say that's in location pretty well. We're use, we are using all these cut edges as like reference for squareness. As long as our cuts are pretty square, the chair is gonna turn out fine. We kind of recognize they're not gonna turn out perfect, but that's kind of the nature and the beauty of this chair design is you can make some mistakes and it still all adds up to a chair. To drill the holes, we're going to take our other sub-assembly and we're just going to put it under here and balance it. That seems like it would be precarious, but you'll find it's actually pretty robust, so don't really worry about it too much. Alright, 
and we've got this ready to drill holes and put our screws in. So I'm going to take my drill and just like all these other steps, it's just going to be a little higher. I'm going to locate this right here and we're going to drill into it. This is pretty important now that we've practiced putting a bunch of holes in that we're going nice and square because we're pretty close to this edge, right? And if we went really wildly out of square, I'm actually going to, I would actually puncture through here. So I'm going to come through, make sure it's nice and perpendicular right there. You can see I'm kind of holding it, holding, pulling the trigger with my thumb. But I found for me, that just makes it a little easier when I'm putting something together this high. You could theoretically put it on the ground or something, or stand on a phone book if you want, but we'll put a screw in here. All right. And I'm going to take this clamp off. I'm going to take this clamp off because I got to get to that location. I'm just gonna move one of these over just to keep it from rotating. All right, and we'll tighten that up. And we'll put that screw in. This other side's gonna be a little easier because we already have this kind of held in place. So we're gonna put the clamps in the same orientation, but it's not gonna move around on us nearly as much because we're not kind of assembling this in space. Same thing, same concerns that we want to make sure everything's nice and flush. And we want to make sure we're leaving at least one of the holes uncovered when we clamp it so that way we can actually put a screw in there. Or one of the hole locations that is. All right, so we're going to clamp it. We're going to take our drill. All right, we'll unclamp these and we'll just move a clamp so I can get actually to that location. And we're going to clamp, we leave, we do a second clamp in this location, even though we've got this one hole here, mostly because you can see when one, one screws in there, it's acting as a pivot and I can actually move this around if I want, right? So we want to make sure that we're clamping that so it's not moving. It does actually allow you this freedom though, if things did move a little bit when you drilled it, we could at least get this back parallel and as flush as we can. One thing to be really cautious of when you're doing this is that these things can drive a screw all the way through this board if you wanted to. You want to make sure that you're not going much deeper, if any deeper than the countersink, because this is so close to the edge, it would split this. If we, if I just kept on torquing this, it would just drive it and split this board. So we're this far and it's not a thing that can stand, but you can see it's not going to sit flat. And if yours sits flat, you are probably lucky or really, really good. Um, and uh, what we're gonna try and do is twist this out a little bit, which is gonna involve a kind of change up of sequence. So I'm gonna take the backrest, and I'm gonna put the backrest in place, and we're only gonna put the top screws on the backrest in, uh, in right now. And what we're doing is we're still kind of relying on our cuts as our frame of reference. So I'm gonna plant this in place, Okay, I'm going to clamp the other side. And we're trying to get everything nice and flush again. And what, we're only going to put the top screws in and then we're going to put the uh, back apron on. And when we put those last screws in there, in both of those, it's going to really triangulate this thing, which affords us the ability to try and straighten it out a little bit. All right, so we're making sure that we're nice and you can see that's even made taking a little bit of the wobble out, or out of the out of it already. And we're gonna make it as flush as we can get it. And 
You can see we're out down at the bottom, but when we twist everything, it's going to get a little bit closer. Alrighty, so we've got it clamped in place. It is going to, because it's twisted, it's not going to be perfect. And what we're going to do is, as we put all of these screws in, we're going to hopefully get rid of that twist. So I'm going to put this top screw in. side kind of double check that we're pretty flush we're gonna put that screw in so we have two screws holding this in place so we can still move it around a bit and we're gonna put our back apron in place doing the same thing we're just gonna put the top screws on them in place so we're going to use a piece of scrap wood to locate this vertically because rather than this being flush like the other aprons, we actually want it down the thickness of a piece of wood. And that way when we put our seat in, our seats lean back a little bit so it's a little more comfortable. So I'm going to clamp this in. Kind of double check it with this. And we're going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. so we're going to scoot this and what I want to make sure is that this top kind of edge is lined up pretty close and that's going to still allow us this kind of uh, degree of freedom of twist so we can try and work the twist of the chair still all right so that looks pretty good you can see I bumped it with my fist you could use this as a little mallet um, to try and position the parts perfectly Let's clamp it a little tighter. This is a little finicky because we are clamping on the other side onto the support of the backrest, which is not parallel to this face. So it's going to be a little finicky as we clamp it all together. Bear in mind that you can also, after you put your first screw in, twist the whole thing a little bit. So I'm going to come back over here, make sure that's nice. We go up a little bit and we could scoot it over a little. All right. And I'm going to put that screw in. It is twisted, right? But we're gonna hopefully resolve that in the following steps. All right, we'll come over to the other side. Kind of triple check it. Covered up the screw though, so I'm gonna bring this down. Check it again. All right, and we'll put that screw in. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> All right, for this. We're going to actually sit on the chair to try and straighten it out. And I can lean one way or the other, and that's gonna kind of manipulate the amount of twist is in this thing. So I'm gonna lean this way. I'm gonna try and lighten, straighten up this edge over here on the backrest. And we're gonna drill this hole. All right, then hopefully without moving too much, I'm gonna put the screw in it. Okay, and right away that has created a triangle within this board, which should stiffen the whole thing up quite a bit. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side. 
This gets a little awkward because I'm not left-handed. in the chair up quite a bit. We're gonna put it back up here and I'm gonna put these last screws in this apron. Same thing, I'm just gonna try and flush these up with my hands as I go. Alright, so we're gonna scoot this over a little bit, try and get it flush. And same on the other side. And there's the frame. So now all we have left to do is put the seat in. So the last little bit is putting the seat on. So I'm gonna take my three seat boards. And I'm gonna put them in place. And what we're first gonna do before we lay out where we're gonna put the holes is uh, we're gonna find the order of the boards we want and how we want them to look. So you can see that this board has this kind of white stripe. This one's got a white stripe. So I'm actually gonna orient those to the outside just to kind of go for some level of order here. And then these ones also have like really, really straight grain. This one's got a little bit of wavy grain. So I'm gonna put that one in the middle. And this one you can see it's got kind of an ugly side. It's got a lot of tear out. So uh, I'm gonna put that, make sure I put that side down. So we're gonna orient them like that. The reason we gotta do this first is the way we're gonna lay these out are gonna, it's gonna be asymmetrical front to back. And we, so we have to kind of be aware of that as we go to do the layout. Okay, so I lifted these up and put them right, right on the table here so I knew which side's the back. If you wanna take a little note or something to remember that, that's fine. Um, and this is designed so that the front of the seat overhangs the apron a little bit and the back of the seat is flush with the back apron. In doing so, we have to adjust our length or where our holes are relative to the end of the board. So for the back, we're going to put those at 3 8 in. Okay, and I'm going to shoot for one inch from either edge. So I'm going to come over here with my square. And at that 3 8 I'm going to put a tick mark at one and a tick mark at four and a half. Okay, on the front of the seat, I'm gonna put it at three quarter because it overhangs by three eighths. I'm gonna add three eighths to three eighths to get my three quarter. And same thing, we're gonna put a hole at or plus at one and one at four and a half. I try to make these plus signs not too giant, so that my hope is that the screw head covers them up when I put the screw in. Um, if you have a stray little tick mark, it's not something to worry about too much. So we're gonna do that to all three boards. So we're gonna put the two outside boards on first, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna push it all the way up against the top of this apron here, and it's gonna sit, register pretty good. Um, it is gonna be probably a little out of flush here, and that's just a condition of these being not cut perfectly square. I'm not too worried about that. I'm more concerned about this running into here perfectly because we're gonna use that to locate the center board. And I'm gonna take my clamp here and clamp that in the middle. I'm gonna take my other clamp and clamp the front in the same way. And this is going to give us enough room to put all four screws in. Now I'm actually not going to be putting these screws in perfectly square to this because I'm a little afraid with that angle that I'm going to come out the side of here. So I'm actually going to be putting them straight down. I think the angle is such that it's not going to really make the head look too funny, but it's going to make sure that we don't blow out the side of the boards here. So I'm going to do the back first. And because it's clamps here, I'm going to go ahead and just drill both at the same time. And we'll put those screws in. All 
right, we'll come to the front. And we'll do the same thing. Like that, I'm gonna make sure I'm pretty vertical rather than going straight into that face. Take the clamps out. I'm gonna do, do the exact same thing with the other side. So last, we're gonna put the center board in. And because these are nice and justified up against these aprons, all I have to do with this one is kind of eyeball it straight and eyeball it in the middle. It looks like there's gonna end up being about an eighth of an inch gap in there. And same thing, I'm gonna clamp these in place. and drill the holes and put the screw in. <laughs> 